Oh, my God. What is it? Is, is she all right? She's done it. Done what? She's left me. Left you? Can't you hear? I said she's left me. Your sister walked out on me and her child. <laughs> Year five, my first season, uh, I came on the show, and the show, as they say, jumped the shark. It went from being, you know, top ten to number two, it, because they were so into Mackenzie's life. And I thought, wow, am I made? Not only is, like, everybody going to get to know Max, but I'm going to be in a top five show for the next however long it's on the air. My first week, my, first, my second week on the show, she was now... Um, in a, in a relationship with the guy who was the roadie for the Rolling Stones, as I recall, or an assistant or something. When she asked me into her room and I saw the lines of coke on her table, I knew it was over. I knew this is never going to last, in spite of all my enthusiasm for how well we were doing. <clears throat> Actually, I've kind of put the cart before the horse. I knew that was trouble. Then the show went on, then the ratings, I thought, oh, this is going to be great. But really, the die was cast. She was, you know, in, totally involved in the drug culture. And <clears throat> she was fired some weeks later. I was called into the office for what I was positive was a vote of confidence. We're going to fire her, but we're going to keep you because, you know, we love you. The audience seems to be loving you. And what they told me was, we can't keep you because we don't know how to keep writing her out if you're there and having to make excuses and where is she and how to do that. So we have to let you go. It was crushing, crushing. Towards the end of the first season, they brought us back. Second season we started, second, my second season, this would be year six. She was fired again. Fired again, fired again. <clears throat> All this time, I would say that she was, we got very close. Um, I had, you know, growing up in the 60s, I had a lot of friends that got addicted, beat it or not. So I, I was kind of enlightened as to what it is that happens to a person psychologically, what an addiction is. And even though I was somewhat naive, I was also somewhat enlightened and educated. And she was very frank with me, very frank with me. Um, I loved her. I loved her. And when she was fired in season nine, our last season, I cried because I was afraid this is now a suicide watch. She's had so many opportunities. She's hit bottom and she can't get there. Um, well, you know, what I didn't know is that she had further to go before she turned it around. But we never lost contact. I value her relationship very highly. We speak all the time. Um, she's been clean and sober now for many, many years. Her son is this fabulous guy. Her husband, then now ex-husband, they all have a wonderful relationship. She leads a very healthy life. Uh, and she's the most soulful person I know. She's so soulful and bright, and she always was. <clears throat> Those were really difficult times because of the emotional roller coaster. You know, for selfish reasons, emotional roller coaster because, ah, the show's doing great, I have a great job, it's over again. Ah, I'm back, we're back on the air, ah, it's over again. Over and over and over. How did that uh, impact the storyline of the show? What did they, how did they explain her coming? <clears throat> um, you know, it's hard for me to answer over the five years, how they kept writing what our current condition was, why she was there or not, why I was there or not. They didn't at first. And then after a while, they decided, leave her out, let's keep him in, because I, I, they seemed to like me on the show. And then finally, they, we had the baby, and then she was fired again, and she, I got a Dear John letter. And that Dear John letter show, which is one of my favorite shows, because... Stuart and Dee Dee Wolpert wrote that episode, and it was so difficult to write. How do you not make her the bad guy? And they worked so hard on it, and they allowed me to, to just have conversations with them about it. <clears throat> not that I had any input, but just so we would protect this character. It's hard to protect a character who leaves their child. The character you want. Yeah. Oh, Annie. I love you so much. You're just lying there peacefully because you think I have all the answers, don't you? I don't, I don't know what to do. One thing I do know, though, and I was very wrong about it, is that I don't want you to forget your mother. She loves you very much. I'm going to make sure you always know that. And what we decided to do, what they decided to do, was to make a Dear John letter. Basically saying, from Julie, Mackenzie's character, this is what I'm feeling, this is my, my dilemma right now, and my panic, and my dissatisfaction with self and I could never raise a kid successfully. I know you can. Our job was to protect the character of Julie and it was really hard and Stuart and Dee Dee Wolpert did this amazing job writing this episode so you wouldn't hate the character of Julie. And they had to write Max in such a way that he could express anger but also understand. 
And in 22 minutes, you know, what it usually takes one 50 hours of therapy to deal with, we had to get through this and communicate to the audience an emotional bottom and make it okay for them to not hate Julie. And I think they did an amazing job. It's, <clears throat> it's one of my two favorite episodes that I ever did on that show because I thought they handled it so elegantly and it was so difficult to do, as in life. You know, when it's like if you, you know, if you bifurcate a relationship, what you hope is that all the people that you are with will choose both of you. It never works that way. They choose one and, and, dis and hurt the other. I mean, I'm in, it happened to me many years ago. So it's, um, it's interesting. You know, it's really interesting. You make new friends and you realize that your old friends were not real friends and uh, very interesting stuff goes on. Life is like, it's like Phoenix, you know, like a Phoenix, everything around. You mean everything, yeah, yeah. Well, she certainly did. Mackenzie certainly rose from the ashes. She, um, she wanted to be a good mom and she finally turned it around and she's a great mom. She's a great mom, yeah.